evening, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for, for joining. I'm sorry to have put you all on mute just to start, but it's just to give you all a welcome and then to introduce some of the people that will be joining us this evening. This is the Chinese New Year Valentine's Cook-Along in aid of uh, leukemia care, which is absolutely fantastic. I can't thank all of you enough for um, buying a box or wanting to join in, uh, uh, especially at, at this time of year. Um, the way that this is going to run is that I'm going to introduce you to someone called Zach, who's the CEO of the Give Me a Care, and he's just going to say a few words about, about that charity. I'm then going to introduce you to uh, Peter Good, very quickly, who's the, the national president of uh, uh, 41 Club. And then I'm going to introduce you to someone called Dave, a chef Dave, who is going to run you through exactly how to cook all of the dishes um, that you've either had through the post or you're going to decide to make for yourselves. But um, hopefully that you've got all the facts and can follow all the instructions. And he's going to go step by step. And by the end of it, you should all have the most marvellous Chinese meal ever. Now, we have had a small debate about whether or not it's going to be possible to have uh, us all on unmute so that as you're cooking your food, um, you might be able to ask questions or whatever it is as you go along. Um, so far, with this many <laughs> people in the meeting, uh, already that might not be possible so what we're going to do after we've uh, let Zach say a few words and Peter and so on and we'll introduce Dave and he says a quick hello we'll try and uh, let everyone unmute but if it gets difficult to hear Dave give his instructions or whatever then uh, we may have to put everyone back on mute just so that you can hear what he's saying and then if you've got questions you can unmute and um, ask them as they go if we do unmute and allow us to ask questions um, I understand people want to chat and there's going to be background noise and all the rest of it. But if maybe you can just cook and keep some of the noise, um, some of the chat and all the rest of it to a bit of a minimum just so that we, so people can freely ask questions and all the rest of it, that probably would be better. But this is our first time doing something of this size, so we'll just see how we go. I hope that's okay. So, thank you so much. I'm now going to find Zach amongst all of the other... Um, uh, 100 and whatever it is, 40 sewing faces. So, Zach, if you don't mind unmuting yourself and saying hello to everybody. Hi, everyone. That would be wonderful. Um, so, uh, nice to meet anyone who doesn't know me. Um, oh, spotlighted. Um, so, I'm Zach from Whiteley. I'm the Chief Exec at Leukemia Care. Um, I won't talk too long because I know everyone's here to cook Chinese rather than listen to me. Um, but I just wanted to start by thanking everybody. Um, a, everyone who's attended and who's bought a book box and donated to looking your care. I'm sitting at my desk at the moment, but I'm going to dash through to the kitchen um, in a minute and start joining in with the cooking as well. So I think it's going to be a really fun evening for us. I'd like to particularly thank Lou Ban and Mark and Vicky um, and the rest of the team for organising this. Uh, 41 Club and the President Peter, who I think is going to speak after me, um, for hosting the event as well. Um, and particularly to Dave, who's going to teach us all to cook um, Chinese on uh, Chinese New Year's Eve. So really excited for the rest of this. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Leukemia Care is a national blood cancer charity. Um, our role is to provide advice, information and support to all of those affected by leukemia and other forms of blood cancer, whether that's people who've been diagnosed or their family and friends. We've got a range of services, including helplines, national support groups, patient information, um, and anyone who wants to find out more about the charity can do so on our website. Just Google Leukemia Care, um, and it should be the first thing that comes up. Um, so thanks to everyone who's been involved in this. Uh, looking forward to a really fun evening, and hopefully everyone else's Chinese will turn out better than I'm sure mine well um but good luck um, and thank you very much awesome thank you so much Jack. i'll let you go and run to the kitchen while peter just says hello and uh, then we'll crack on with the cook yeah thanks very much zach um greetings to all of you we're in for a real treat tonight um i have actually been to lou van it's a fabulous restaurant fully recommend it any of you up in the liverpool area or any time you're up that way I recommend you go and have a meal there. It's fabulous. The best Chinese you'll ever have. Uh, so we'll hand over to Dave now and let's uh, crack on with some cooking. Thanks, Dave. Well, I've got muted now, so let's come on. Let's come on. Okay, hello, can I have 
everyone hear me? Can everyone see me? Which is more important. I've got a lovely face here to see. Yeah, looks like you can see me, hear me, fantastic. Well, first and foremost, Ni hao, hello, how are you? Hello. Oh, hello. It is uh, Chinese New Year's Eve, it's the start of spring harvest, which is a really, really important part of the Chinese year. It's incredible to have you. Can I bring it? Some feedback again. It's okay. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Zach. Uh, thank you, Mark, for organising this. What an incredible event. Um, it's the biggest one we've ever done. We have done a few live cook-alongs now, but this is certainly the best attended we've ever done. So thank you all for joining us. And thank you for contributing to such a good cause as well. So as we said, it is Chinese New Year. Why is that such a big deal? Well, it's almost, I suppose, Christmas. I'm still with uh, us. Enrolled in the one. Sorry, I cheated. What's that? Really? Bit of feedback again, but we're getting there. So. Yeah, imagine Christmas, Easter, everything all rolled into one. It's the best part of the year. Uh, winter is finished. We've got this new harvest appearing, new shoots, new vegetables, uh, new life. And it is the start of a brand new year and the end of last year, which I think we all agree. We're looking forward to the start of this new year and putting last year behind us. Uh, but anyway, let's get started. We've got some great dishes for you tonight. We've got our uh, Luban chicken in chili sauce. This is going to be a really rich and a uh, little bit spicy dish, but the main thing here is the colour, the colour red. That's what we're after. Red means good luck. It means prosperity. It very much goes hand in hand with Chinese New Year. And that's why you see the red envelopes. That's why you see all the red clothes and people wearing red. Uh, it's all about being prosperous and bringing in great new fortune for the new year. So we've got a fantastic chicken dish and chicken is also traditionally eaten around this time in China. We're going to serve that with some really healthy greens. We've chosen Pak Choi today. Pak Choi is absolutely stunning. It's packed full of nutrients and uh, minerals and vitamins that's going to be really tasty with the ginger and garlic and the seasoning we're bringing to it and then some rice okay this is going to be really exciting rice not your boring rice that you get this is going to be really nice soft steamed rice absolutely beautiful but we're going to fold through our coconut and cardamom flavors at the end and that's going to be absolutely incredible so are we all ready to do some cooking? Give me a thumbs up. Let me see if you're all there. We're all ready. We should have, hopefully, two woks you'll probably need for this. You're gonna cook one in, um, you're gonna have your chicken in one. We'll probably do our greens in another. If you don't have a wok, a good frying pan is fine. You're gonna need a decent sized pan to cook your rice in, okay? with a lid on as well, that'd be fantastic. Hopefully you've got your instructions. You're gonna need them. All got them, yeah, okay. What else do we need? You should have some chicken, or if you are vegetarian, you're gonna have some tofu instead. Um, yeah, we've got our lovely pak choy. We've got some spring onions and then you should have all the packets that we sent you in the post. If you haven't got them, we're probably a bit stuck, but hopefully you've got these, you've got all the ingredients and we should be ready to go, okay? You should have a few tomatoes, you get a good knife. You might not all have one of these, but a good sharp knife is what you need. We're going to chop up the pak choy, we're going to chop up the uh, spring onions. A good sharp knife is going to be essential here. And then you're going to need a couple of other bits and pieces, a little tiny bit of oil, and a cloth as well. I think everyone's ready. Like you said, if anyone wants to ask any questions, we'll try unmuting as we go. 
If not, there is a point to raise the hand, and I'm sure we'll pick it up. And if not, you could message into the group, maybe. Mike, it'll be your job to read any messages coming in while I'm busy. No problem. Yeah, <laughs> okie dokie. Right, we're going to get cracking. So, the, probably the best thing to start with is our rice, okay? This probably takes the longest to cook, so start with the rice. You've got 200 grams of rice, and you can use pretty much any rice you've got. Long grain, short grain, it's all going to work roughly the same. As a general rule of thumb, I will cook uh, one part rice, two parts water, and generally that will work absolutely perfect. So, I've got 200 grams of rice, I've just rinsed that under some cold water. What we're doing there is rinsing off the starch, okay? If we don't do that, the rice is going to stick together, it's going to get a bit clumpy, I'm sure we've all over the years had some of that rice that's sticky and all stuck together and gunky, we don't want that today. So give it a good rinse first and foremost. And then if you drink it, we'll say Gambai, uh, which basically means cheers in China. Oh. Everyone Gambai? Gambai? Fantastic. People are having a good Gambai there. That's very much part of Chinese culture as well. So if we Gambai throughout the meal, a little mini celebration mini toast that will happen quite often through the meal so i like to also do it through the cooking process okay i said two parts water one part rice so for 200 grams of rice i'm going to start with 400 milliliters of water get that into the pan okay good medium sized pan Onto the stove. We want to bring that up to the boil. And as that water's heating off, we can add our rice that is now nicely rinsed off into the pan. Let's give it a little swirl around. Okay. Pop the lid on. And that is it so far, okay? Really easy. And if we've got our calculations right, the two parts water to one part rice, what we should find is when that water is all absorbed, the rice is perfectly cooked. How are we doing? Everyone still with me? Any questions so far? All good so far, Dave. All good so far. Still with me? <laughs> yeah. It gets a little bit more complicated from now on, I'm afraid, guys. So don't take it easy just yet. Right. Okay. Let's have a look. Part of Chinese cooking, a lot of the work is done in the kind of preparation of. Okay? Okay, so when it actually comes to cooking, that part is relatively quick and relatively simple. There's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one of the main ones, which I find really fascinating and really beautiful, is when I was doing the cooking at home, also wants to spend time with the family. So all the preparations done early on in the day. When it comes to cooking, food goes in the pan, really quickly cooked, serve it up, and everyone can sit down together. And I just think that's absolutely wonderful and a real nice part of Chinese culture is all around that dining table. Second part for that is the quicker we cook our food the more nutrients and the more goodness we keep in the food itself. For example, the pak choy, we only want to cook this for a couple of minutes tops 
the more you cook it, the more the nutrients you're going to lose, okay? And that is why traditional Chinese food is very healthy, very vibrant, very colorful. That's all to do with quick cooking processes. So there we go. There's a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of uh, Chinese culture there for you. And I'm going to start probably with our greens now, okay? So we'll get them ready, so we're prepared. And all we're going to do with this, we'll hopefully have joy, hopefully got some of this at home. Like I said, really healthy, really tasty. I'm just going to rinse it under the tap. Going to get rid of any soil, any little bits of dirt. Just drain that off as well. Try and get rid of any of that excess. You'll find greens on any meal time, breakfast, lunch, dinner over in China, even snacks. There'll be lots of green vegetables. Like I said, really healthy. We definitely want to have some of this with our meal today, okay? All I'm going to do now is cut it in quarters. I'm going to try and do this quite slowly so you can see. Lay the patio down on a board. We're going lengthwise in half first. And then I'll do that again into quarters. You cut the bottom off. I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep the bottom on as it um, it keeps all the leaves together. But what you will find is, yeah, there is a little hard core that you can take out. It's almost like a, a triangle shape. I just slice that little bit off because that's the hardest part. That's the core, and that'll be the toughest bit of the bad joy. So. You can slice that little bit off. We do that with all the quarters. Hey, if someone's put the end of the pack tray on. That's all right. Don't tell not to worry. <laughs> so if you have cut the end off, it's not the end of the world. Don't worry. It's going to be fine. I just like to keep mine together as a whole piece, but you'll just have separate leaves, and that again is fine. Later on, when we do come to cook it, just cook it for a little bit less time, okay? So, if it's intact, it's going to cook for just a couple of minutes, but if you have chopped the end off and it's come into separate leaves, just cook it for that little bit less, one minute less. Okay, bad choy is ready. Like we said, it's all about preparation. You don't want to be over the stove for hours. You want to be able to spend time with the family. Or it could be a yeah, meeting. The dining table in China is such an important part of culture and family life and business life. It's just absolutely huge. And again, I just think that's absolutely amazing. So, right. Okay. I'm oh, sure he's ready. Another question's come in, Dave. Should the rice be on a low heat? Yeah, once the rice is at the boil. You're going to drop that down now in temperature and leave it to simmer. So, about 15, 16 minutes from now from bringing it down to a simmer. So, I've just dropped mine down to really low. Keep that lid on. We want all the moist water to be absorbed. Just keep your eye on it though. Once you think the water is all gone, obviously. Take it off the heat, take it right off then, leave the lid on. But that shouldn't happen for a good 10, 15 minutes yet, guys, okay. 
Okay, so we've got chicken breasts or chicken thigh if you prefer. For those that have got tofu, I'll talk you through that in a second. But those who have chicken, you're going to slice it up if you haven't done that already. And what you're looking for is little kind of two centimeter pieces. One and a half centimeter to two centimeter pieces. And again, this will mean that the chicken cooks quite quickly. So we're not sitting here worried. Is it cooked? Is it not cooked? So we'll start. If you haven't cut your chicken up yet, let's just spend the next couple of minutes slicing it up. Little cubes. And then we're gonna turn our wok on, guys, okay? We're gonna get walking. Now, I don't wanna go crazy here, so let's get the wok on. Let's get it on a medium heat, okay? We do want some heat. Wanna hear a little sizzle when we put our chicken in? But we do also want to have a little bit of control over it. We don't want it to burn while our back's turned. We just want a nice controlled heat. So let's go medium heat. And a little splash of oil into there, okay? Hey, whilst people are dicing the chicken and getting ready with the chicken and the, the oil's warming up, um, this time of year, Dave, like, well, this time last year we had, a, we had a special menu for the Spring Festival. Um, obviously, we're closed this year, but what sort of stuff would you have on the menu for the Spring Festival? Yeah, well, the obvious, the obvious uh, dish which leaps out straight away is um, spring rolls. And not a lot of people put two and two together. Uh, so spring rolls are actually eaten in the celebration of the uh, spring harvest or the new year. Uh, traditionally, vegetable spring rolls. Uh, like we said earlier, the spring harvest and the new year um, signifies new life. It's the end of winter. Traditionally, through winter, you would have been eating stodgy meals, uh, cured meats, lots of pickles, because there wasn't a lot of fresh vegetables around. So. As soon as uh, yeah, new harvest begins, new life starts to grow, the spring roll would have been made with the first shoots and the first vegetables that were available. So to see a spring roll on the streets, on the, um, the street vendors or in houses was, it was a mini celebration of the new vegetables starting to grow. So spring roll, and um, yeah, really interestingly, the shape of the spring roll and the colour is meant to signify a gold bar, and that is again about prosperity for New Year. So lots of new meanings there. But like we said, chicken dishes, uh, fish dishes, duck dishes, and dumplings would all be eaten around this time, and it'd all be made by family members brought to the table, and everyone would sit around the table, all joining in and eating little bits of this, little bit of that. So. That's what we would have had on our menus at Luban. Dave, a few questions come in. Um, one of the um, guests is asking, what type of oil are you using? It doesn't matter what type of oil they use. Ideally, you just want an oil that isn't overpoweringly flavoursome. So uh, an extra virgin olive oil is not suitable for this. It's too flavoursome. So you want a veg oil or um, a nut oil, like a peanut oil, if you have that at home, is used quite a lot in Chinese cooking. For now, just a little um, a drop of veg oil or sunflower oil is absolutely fine. <clears throat> and you only need a small amount, okay? Uh, we've got another guest, Dave, who sadly forgotten their spring onions, asking if shallots will replace. Shallot will do. Yeah, so very naughty, very naughty. Now, shallots absolutely fine. We're just after that nice, fresh onion flavour in there, okay? So we've got one spring onion here. I'd suggest, yeah, a good size shallot will be absolutely fine. So it says here we're going to slice it diagonally, okay? So we're going to do that now. I'll show you. But basically... We're going to use a knife and we're going to, instead of slicing this way, we're going to slice at an angle, okay? So, give this a go. So what about, what shape should the shallot be, Dave? Is it, is it 
I would suggest with a silla, just keep it nice and straight. As you just slices into the slices would be absolutely perfect. Yeah, so I'm just running the blade through the string onion here. Okay, let the blade do the work. There's no need to be chopping and banging away here. Let the knife glide through. You should get some really lovely pieces of spring on you. There we go. Nice angular slices. They also, when it's spring festival, um, when I was out in China doing my research for the, for the project, moon cake was um, a feature that seemed to be around one of the times. Is that a spring dish or is that an all year round dish? Yeah, moon cake certainly. Um, obviously, the reason Chinese New Year doesn't fall in line with our New Year is because it is down to the lunar calendar. So everything follows in China a lunar calendar and they also have the traditional calendar. The moon cake is very much a celebratory dish for the start of the new year as well. So and there's lots of really quirky sweet snacks that you'll find that are also eaten all around this time. Um, best place to look, go to the Chinese supermarket and see what they've got in. There's some incredible stuff you'll find there, absolutely blow your mind. Right, I'm going to get started on the chicken, okay? We're going to start just browning off the chicken, which basically just means we're sealing it all the way around, okay? We don't want to go too dark here. Okay, the good sizzle, that means the wok is ready. Traditionally in China, they would use a ladle with the wok. You guys can use whatever you feel comfortable with at home, a set of tongs, or a, a ladle, or a spatula, whatever you, whatever you feel like, okay? If your wok is nice and hot, you only need to use a little bit of oil, okay? A lot of people think the Chinese food is oily, unhealthy. Not true. If you get out to China and you're lucky enough to get out to China and experience some of the food out there, it will absolutely blow your mind, change everything. It certainly did for me when I got out there and saw how fresh and meticulous the cookery was out there, the skills completely shattered any kind of illusions I had about Chinese food when I got up there. Don't get me wrong, we all enjoy our Friday, Saturday night takeaway. But the real cooking is very healthy. Okay, uh, Peter's asking, where, what should we be doing with the toffee at this stage? Okay, when we've got the toffee, we're going to wait till the chicken's brown for everyone else. The toffee's going to take a lot less time to cook, so just have that ready. Diced up, we'll have our wok warm. And David, is there any oil in the wok for the top row? Is it just the top dry wok? Now, again, a little splash in there, because what you will find is the tofu might stick to the pan otherwise. If you do have tofu, make sure it's drained off as well. It sometimes comes in a, in a liquid. Just try and get rid of as much of that liquid as you can. Otherwise, you're going to get spitting back from the wok onto you, okay? And nobody likes that. Nobody wants that. Okay, so guys, the chicken should be sealed all the way around now. We cooked that for a couple of minutes. So now is the time for the guys with tofu. A little bit of oil in the pan now, make sure it's nice and hot. And you're going to pretty much do the same, put the tofu in. It just takes a lot less time than the chicken. Obviously, the guys with chicken, we're trying to cook that chicken through. There we've got another pizza. Pizza's asking again. We have our tofu. We've had our tofu pressed since yesterday. Nice. So you got rid of all the uh, juices from there. That's fantastic. A great work. If anyone else has got any questions, please um, put them in the chat and we'll do our best to um, answer them. Another question from Donna. Uh, my, my rice has no more water. Should I add some more, Dave? 
Now just take a little spoon, try a little bit now. If all's gone well. It should be perfectly cooked now. Okay. Yeah. Once the rice is cooked, I like to add a little pinch of salt and just gently fold it in. If your rice, the water has gone now and you've tasted it and it feels like it's cooked, turn it off the heat, but leave the lid on now, okay? That's going to stay nice and warm for a long time, so don't need to worry about that. All right, guys, back to the chicken. We need to add in now the tomato, okay? So there's about four dessert spoons. Any questions from Jilly? Her rice is only just boiling. But don't worry. Don't worry, Jilly. Let it cook. Let it cook. Don't rush it. Come up to the boil. It'll take about 15 minutes from the boil, okay? Just keep your eyes on it. That's fine. Anyone else? Keep your eye on it. If the water has gone, switch it off the heat and leave the lid on. Okay, guys, we have tofu and chicken. You can add your tomatoes in. Four dessert spoons. And we're just going to stir that in. Okay. Yeah, that's what oh, mine looks like. Four tomatoes into the pan. And we're just going to cook that for a minute or so. And the first sachet we're looking for, guys, is chili bean sauce. Chili bean sauce. Now, this has got incredible flavor. And we use an ingredient called tobanyang, which is a fermented bean paste. I don't let that put you off, it's absolutely delicious. We're going to add that packet into the wok, into your chicken or tofu, into the tomato. There you go, I guess we'll probably recognise the smell, because to me that's the smell of a typical Chinese restaurant. What, what gives that smell? What's in there that makes that amazing aroma? So that right there is the, um, as I said, the chou ban yang is a very distinctive taste and smell. It's not something that our palates are normally used to, and it is that slight fermentation process. Oh, which, uh, broad beans, or sometimes you can use soybeans, and it's fermented. It sounds a bit horrible, but actually it's, yeah, it's just the same as pickling or something like that, curing. It's just another process. And what you'll get now, is that stunning flavour that comes with it. There's a little bit of ginger in there as well, and that's going to really lift it really nice. We can turn that down a little bit now, guys. Your chicken will be cooked, and the tofu will be warm through. Hey, where, where else would that, that toban yang? That, that, that smell is just so familiar to many dishes that when you're in a high-end restaurant or a takeaway, that smell is distinctive. So what dishes in a restaurant that we always use? Probably the most famous is a Kung Po chicken, which is pretty similar to this dish we're doing here. This is a simplified version for you guys at home. A Kung Po, um, and as we know from our visits out to China, certainly in the northern part of China where we were, if you make a good Kung Po chicken, that is basically the barometer for how good of a cook you are. So the better the Kung Po, the better the chef. So hopefully, guys, at the end of today, your barometers of Chinese cooking are going to be way up there. But yeah, certainly a few dishes. Um, anything kind of uh, red, spicy. Um, yeah, even some curries, Chinese curries, will have a little spoonful of this in there as well. It really lifts all the flavours. Okay, guys, we can turn that wok down now on a gentle heat. Smells fabulous. I'm going to put my spring onions in now. I didn't want to put them in too soon because I don't want to overcook them. Again, going back to that, what we said earlier, we want to keep them nice, crunchy. 
Don't want to lose all the goodness. We should now have something that looks pretty similar to this, okay? Got that yeah. little colour of the green in there against yeah, the green. Was that spring onion going in? The spring onion's gone into the chicken dish or your tofu, okay? And then also there, you've just added a little drop of water to the dish. What was that for? That was well spotted. Well spotted. So, the spring onion is going in the chicken dish. Yeah, it's going it's cooked now and I just want to leave it simmering here. So all I did, a little tiny bit of water now, just so the sauce doesn't get too thick. I still want it to be saucy. So a little tiny spoon of water in there. Yeah. For, for all the sake, this the sauce just let you coat the beans. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. There should just be a nice coating. One of the mistakes that we make um, when we're doing Chinese is really saucy there be loads of liquid in the dishes, but really that's not the case at all over in China. You've got to imagine a lot of dishes are eaten with chopsticks, so all this excess sauce is completely unnecessary uh, and normally throws out the balance of the whole dish. So, just enough, and this is what we're after here, okay, just that flavours, that kind of consistency, really good, right? I'm going to check my rice again. It's nice and fluffy. I've turned it down. There's a tiny bit of water left there, so we're just going to keep that going for another minute or two. And if there's no water left in your rice, then switch it off and just leave that lid on, like we said. What if anyone's rice isn't yet isn't right like yours then? Is it, are they okay? <laughs> So if the water's gone and we try it and it's still a bit hard, a bit bitey, let's just add another good splash of water into there, gentle stir and put it back to the heat for a couple of minutes, okay? But well, we're going to start with our bok choy now, or pak choy, everyone's ready. Make sure your chicken or cooking dish is turned right down now to, I've got it on number one here. It's nice and low, it's just a bit away, it's not going to burn, it's not going to stick, and now you can concentrate on the greens, okay? <coughs> I don't know if anyone's uh, been watching BBC recently, but there's an advert at the moment for what's coming up in spring. What's that, Dave? I'm going to tell people because I recognise that chef traffic. Yeah, yeah. I recognise the chef traffic. There's a, there's a well known Chefy program coming out in March or April time of this year, and yours truly is going to be on there, okay? So you'll get to see a little bit more of this. So, how many nights, Dave, will our guests see you, or is that a surprise? It's a bit of a surprise, I'm not allowed to say too much at the moment. I know you can't tell us the name of the program, but can you tell us the initials just to help people just to? Possibly have an inkling to look out for you on TV. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, okay. I suppose I could say G, B, M. Um, I think that's all I'm allowed to say. I've probably said too much now, so if it gets pulled, it's all my own fault. Uh, right, yeah, so it is a program. It should be on in the next month or so, um, and I'll be on for about four or five weeks, so it's going to be good. It's going to be good fun. It's going to be great. And then, Dave, just a little bit more about that because it's really exciting for us in the restaurant and, and you personally. So, when it gets there, what, what are your plans for the, for the food and the menu that's possibly available in the restaurant for our guests watching tonight? I know some other people have been to the Man restaurant, I know there's some people from my hometown of Hong Kong watching, and I know some of Mark's been read and friends have been to the restaurant. But what, what menu are you planning? What people be able to taste the food that you've uh, they possibly could see on TV. Yeah, I think so. Show? So, yeah, the menu I have chosen for that particular show is not a normal menu that you find at Blue Band. So, what we will do is we'll, we'll be developing um, a heat at home version of the menu so people can actually uh, sit at home and enjoy that same menu that I did over there. So, and are we taking bookings for that now? If people are interested, could they contact Mark and say, get us booked in on that chef's table? They could certainly contact Mark. <laughs> Stitch Mark up there, by the way, so I hope you're ready. 
Uh, yeah, we'll be getting, yeah, you can see Mark smiling at me, shaking his fist. Yeah, definitely get hold of Mark later and find out what's coming up at New Band. We've got some incredible stuff happening this year. Right, guys, I'm going to take you back to your last walk, your last frying pan. Um, we're going to put it on a medium heat again. I'd probably say, yeah, medium to low heat for this one. You've got a packet called garlic and ginger oil. Okay, this is a really fragrant oil that we've made at Luban for you guys. Traditionally, this would be fresh ginger, fresh garlic, uh, some fresh spring onion in the pan uh, with a little bit of oil, and that would bring these incredible flavours to the party. Uh, but we've done that all for you here. So, into the pan with the garlic and ginger oil, okay? You don't want this spitting or hissing too violently, okay? We want to slowly infuse all the oil with all those flavours. Okay. Angela's asked a question, is this, is, this, is this for the rice? This is for the greens, okay? We're not going to fry the rice tonight. Although that is a stunning dish, and we do have a fantastic recipe for that available on our social media channels. But today we're going really nice and healthy, light, fluffy rice, okay? So just to recap, Dave, the, the, the pan's hot, you've added the, the flavoured oil. Yes. And now you're going to add the, the, raw, the raw green. Is that yeah, right? that's right. Yeah, because we've, we want to get the most benefit from these greens, okay? So... Mm. So effectively, slowly stir frying these. So into the pan goes the pak choy. That's into the pan with the garlic and ginger oil, okay? And we're just slowly going to stir fry that. Let the oil coat the greens. Give them a good toss around. So again, that oil smells amazing. Okay. Again, a familiar smell from all sorts of restaurants. What was in there again? So we put some um, fresh garlic, fresh ginger, and a little bit of spring onion. We've infused the oil, and we've sent the oil to you guys. Now that is the basis of a lot of Chinese dishes, and, and um, a lot of dishes will start with that process to get the aromats out of the ginger, out of the spring onion. Uh, the garlic as well. And don't forget, they're all really good for you, okay? Ginger, garlic, string onion, uh, absolutely fantastic, really good for your body. And that again was something that was repeated over and over when we were This dish is good for you because this dish is good for you because of this. There's massive emphasis on healthy food, and certainly with everything going on in the world at the moment, the, the better we can take care of ourselves really is the best so putting good food into our bodies is going to keep us really nice and ready and set up for the future really so right we're just going to keep stir fire now you've got this almost glossy look now onto the greens okay they're just ever so slightly wilted we want them a little bit crunchy okay nice crunchy pop choy absolutely stunning okay Right, let's check our rice one more time. We're getting near the end now, guys, so you need to start thinking about getting some plates out ready. Hey, before people dish up and stuff into this amazing food, if anyone's got any questions about um, the restaurant itself, where we are, Dave's experience of, of China, or the fact that he's the only UK approved or will be the first China, Chinese master chef outside of China, Anyone's got any questions about that? Any questions about the um, the food? I've got I've got a few questions last day. Um, when we when we started this project, we, we learned a lot about authentic and the phrase authentic, is, and that that to us was broken down into selecting great ingredients and understanding preparation and understanding flavour and heat. They, can you tell tell the people watching and cooking alongside how that philosophy? transfers to you and when you plan menus and recipes for the Luban restaurant? Yeah, 100%. That was certainly something that we experienced. Um, the best ingredients we can possibly find, 
and they are at the forefront of great traditional Chinese cooking, and that's exactly what we did at the New Pan. So we could find a cheap piece of meat, but why bother? Let's find the best piece of meat that we can find locally as well. We want to keep those micros down. We want to keep local, seasonal, and really fresh ingredients at the forefront. If you start with some incredible ingredients, you can't go too far wrong. But the philosophy I saw in China was exactly that. Find some great ingredients, the local, and um, yeah, certainly those that are in season, the better, okay? So certain things are eaten at certain times of year, and that's because those ingredients are at those, their, their absolute best then. So, and then we don't do too much to them, okay? We let them, we let them speak for themselves, we let these great flavors come through. Um, and that is basically our, our philosophy when we're writing our new menu. So seasonal, local, and best quality we can find. Guys, our greens are nicely wilted. We're not letting them go brown. Look how bright, vibrant green they still are. That's because we're not overcooking them. We're not hitting them too much with too much heat. The rice is cooked. It's nice and fluffy. I'm just folding it around. So I'm going to get the coconut and cardamom seasoning. This is incredible, okay? We're gonna open the coconut and cardamom seasoning. At least it's just asked a question today, but I'm not sure if it's a question or a statement. Um, the, the statement was in the chicken. I'm not sure whether Lisa is in the chicken, or the question was about something in the chicken. Lisa's listening. If you want to rephrase your question or give me a bit more information, we'll help you out, Lisa. Okay, for everyone else, coconut and cardamom seasoning into your rice, okay? But only if it is cooked. If the water has gone, we're going to fold it in, okay? And this will really pimp up the rice, okay? It's not just the boiled steamed rice. Wow, smell that, mate. Can you smell yeah, that? Yeah, the whole thing there smells amazing. So we've got some really lovely rice. And now that coconut and cardamom flavour is just going to boom. It's going to take that rice next level. You can add a little pinch of salt now if you didn't do before already. Don't go too salty, okay? The, the, Not the cardamom, Dave. What's, what's the distinct flavour that everyone can get from cardamom? That, that, that sort of citrusy. It is. It has got a citrus smell, which is quite strange. Um, a really lovely nutty citrusy flavour. It goes really well with coconut. So my rice is ready. Uh, Lorraine just asked a question, but it flashed up and went away. I'm not if you want to ask again. I think, she's, I think it was. What's the secret to perfect rice, Dave? I think it's what we talked about. It's getting that ratio of the um, the water to the rice. So <clears throat> for this style of rice. We want it to be able to be picked up with chopsticks, but not too soggy, so two to one is perfect. Normally at home, if I'm cooking rice, uh, and I'm going to be it with a spoon or a fork or whatever, I'll probably put a little bit less water in it, so it's almost one and a half to one part rice. Um, and it is that, really. Uh, it's just about getting that water content right. Okay. The last sachet we've got, guys, is the green seasoning. If your greens are nicely cooked, which mine are, they're still a little bit crunchy, which is exactly what we wanted. I'm going to add the green sachet in. Now, guys, this does pack a punch, so maybe I would suggest starting with about half of this, okay? And save the other half for another time. It's absolutely fantastic. Some great flavours in here. Chili. Vinegar, which is a massive part of, of um, Tianjin style cookery, they use a lot of vinegars. Is it fair to say, Dave, that vinegar in the cooking is as important as wine in, in Western cooking? Uh, yes, 100%. So, what we found was whereas over in the UK we think every Chinese food should have soy and sesame all over it. That wasn't the case at all. So what we found was vinegars were used to um, enhance flavour. The same way you put it on your chips over here, it automatically brings flavour, doesn't it? 
uh, and the vinegars we use <laughs> very cleverly over in China to bring flavour to the party. Just put the green season in, remember, just use half, I'd say half is plenty. I'm ready to serve up now, I've got everything just taken over, my rice is ready, my greens are on low heat now, my chicken's on low heat now, I've got everything ready. I've got three plates ready now. Uh, the question from Craig, she's asking about um, egg fried rice or fried rice. Would the, would the rice be cooked like this and then fried? What, now what you want to do is uh, use less water. So you, you're talking, let's say one and a half, one and a half parts uh, water to one part rice. And the ideal situation is you will leave that overnight and let it sit in your fridge and let it uh, dry out. And that makes the absolute perfect fried rice. It's, it's not full of water, it has to be dry and it has to be slightly undercooked almost. That makes the best fried rice. So when they, when they put it in the pan, they just the cold rice begin the pan and they just stir fry it? Yes, yes, yeah, that's exactly it. So, as I said, we've got a great recipe, uh, and that's available on our social media. We find Lou Van Liverpool, you can go on there and find it. Um, just another question, Dave. Some guests have got asparagus and uh, beans. Oh, lovely. Um, and they've cooked them. So, I know one of our recipes includes asparagus beans with a pak choy. They're asking what should you do with them? Yeah, toss it all together with your pak choy, okay? All together in there. It's going to be a great plate of greens, absolutely beautiful, asparagus, fine beans, bok choy. Amy and Derek have raised their hands, so we'll have Mark and give me a clue what that, what, that, what that question may be. Okay, those that I haven't seen, I've just placed up the rice into a bowl here. I'm just about to serve my greens up and then I'm going to add in the chicken into the last bowl, okay? Thanks, Amy and Derek. Should be smelling fantastic. Look at those greens, they smell absolutely incredible. And you can toss some sesame seeds over or some crispy shallots or something just to add a little bit of crunch if you like. I like to put a little tiny bit of salt on, a bit of salt bay. See that? We've got Lou Bay here. A little bit of salt onto the rice. Okay, last but not least is our fantastic Lou Ban chicken with chili. Oh, it smells incredible. Into the bowl he goes. And again, if you fancy some crunch or some texture, you can put some toasted peanuts on there. It's very traditional. And that really would make it a really nice Kung Po style chicken there. And that's it really. It's really simple, not over complicated. You've got this beautiful chicken. It's got real nice kind of zingy. You're going to get chilli. You're going to get a little bit of salt in there. You're going to get a buzz in your mouth, which is going to be from that fermented bean paste. Uh, you've got these wonderful greens. Told you they do have a good kick to them, okay? So just be careful with that seasoning. And then you've got this fantastic rice, okay? Really nice steamed rice. And we've folded our coconut and cardamom through. And that's just going to bring some more flavour to the party as well. So relatively simple, guys, yeah? That was pretty easy, do you think? I want to see how everyone's getting on. So Dave, when, when we've been in China and we've been to restaurants, it's, it's a very sociable event. There's lots of conversation. The, the, the host or the person entertaining us holds, holds court. But a lot of the food is, is, is spoken about and conversation flows. So whilst our guests are eating, can they continue asking questions? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all yours for the next half an hour, hour, whatever. As long as the drinks keep coming, I'll be here. All right. Um, okay, so listen, so I think, uh, thanks Dave, if I unmute everybody, it's looking good. Okay, I'll ask you to do that and then maybe we can all uh, give Dave a round of applause or something and you can ask questions uh, as you go. So 
go for it. I'm just going to un unmute you all again. Well done. It was a great, great display, and I hope it tastes as good no, as we it. Don't have to unmute. <laughs> Yay! 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 Yay!